here we are, first boot with the Mugen 5. Hello folks and welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today I want to show you this giant chunk of aluminum. This is by the company Scythe that is out of Japan. In 2002, Scythe originated as a distributor and manufacturer of passive and low noise PC parts. And then since then they've gone into R&D in Taiwan and China and they now produce their own cooling products. Now this is the Revision B. So they've come out with a couple of designs that have been very successful over the years. And now the Revision B adds support for Intel LGA 2066 and AMD AM4, which is for Ryzen chipsets. And now I'm gonna to have to put this to work and see, is this cooler going to perform any better than my current cooler, which is the Deepcool Gamax GT. But when I overclock my Intel i5, 8600K to 5 gigahertz under sustained load at 5 gigahertz, it does thermal throttle. So let's see if going to a bigger heatsink actually improves that, or is it a limit of the Intel thermal interface material? So like I said, this is the Mugen 5 Revision B. It's model SCMG5100. If you have RAM on either side of the socket, it's cut out to support high RAM. So that's good. So this is a design that you can run in either orientation, depending on how it best fits for your motherboard. The fan is a 120 millimeter PWM fan. HPMS2, Hyper Precision Mounting System 2, further optimized second generation mounting system. And it does have dual fan support. So it does contain a second fan clip so you can run push and pull fans, but it does not include the secondary fan. It just includes one fan. Let's take a look inside and see what we get. This is all the mounting hardware. Here we have the fan. This is very nice rubber grommets on this fan. Seems to be a very smooth type of fan. Very nice. Whoa, look at this giant chunk of aluminum. Holy. Interesting, the copper is not exposed. I'm assuming that these heat rails, heat pipes are still copper, but they're plated in silver. And uh, you are supposed to peel this off. This would expose. Oh, it's just clear. So there is no visible copper plate either. So it must be plated. Now it seems like the actual venting fins are a little bit less dense than the Gamax that I currently have because you can see through it a lot easier. But there are more heat pipes where this one has full, would this be six? Six heat pipes on each side, and they go all the way up through to the top. So in this case, there are 12 heat pipes, but it's six combined. Okay, and then in here will be all the mounting hardware. They give you a very nice screwdriver, that is surprising. And here's all the mounting plates and hardware. So you do get, uh, you do get some fan clips, side rails, cooling paste, more side rails, thumb screws, and the black back plate, and the back plate, the metal. So very heavy duty components, and that's your unboxing experience. So you also get instructions that will show you what parts you're supposed to use for what socket type. So you have your different installation methods for Intel and AMD, how to mount your fan, what direction of airflow to put it in, how to mount you know, the back plate and the socket, and how to mount the cooler. And then on this side, this is all AMD. This is LGA, which is what I will need for Intel. So now at this point, what I have to do is actually thermally test my current cooler, install this new one, and retest. This one is physically bigger. To see, will that actually improve the thermals? Or are we limited by Intel's thermal interface material that's between the die and the heat spreader? Let's find out. This system is running the Gamax GT and I've got it set up for purple. This is the CPU cooler that I installed a few months ago and I've been using it ever since. Now it works great at 4.5 gigahertz. I cannot thermal throttle this system, but I am gonna show you here that when I do crank it right up to my maximum overclock that I do get some, some thermal throttling. So right now I'm at my 4.5 gigahertz stable setting. I'm going to set this to my five gigahertz hot stable load profile and now we'll run a stress test and see how long until it thermal throttles. I'm going to start the burn-in test on very high. Start. Now we're doing the burn-in test and we'll just watch the temperature start to creep up on all the cores. We are currently fully overclocked at 5 gigahertz. Oh, we just hit package and ring thermal throttling. 
and we hit core one thermal throttle after two minutes maybe. So it'll, it'll run stable at five gigahertz and I've got the voltages set to 1.39 volt at five gigahertz. CPU cache is at 47, there's my clock frequencies. Everything is running hot but stable. So now, and we've got thermal throttling on core one and core two and on package. I'm going to install this new CPU cooler, the Mugen 5 Rev B, which is quite a bit thicker and see if the thermal performance improves. All right, so here's my current CPU cooler that we just saw thermal throttle at five gigahertz. I have it on push pull. So this one blows the air in, this one pulls it out and then it exhausts out the rear. I do really like this cooler and if the old one, if this other one performs better, I will be losing some RGB because this one does not have any RGB. In the, in the effort of fairness to test the aluminum heatsink performance, I'm gonna leave the fans the same. I will keep the two fans that I'm currently using on the Mugen heatsink, even though it comes with this nice fan itself. Since the last time you saw this system, I have installed more fans. Now it has fan one, two, and three in the front, all blowing air this way, two on the CPU cooler, and one exhaust. This is the Gamax GT ready to be removed. The CPU cooler swap is in progress and I have the Gamax GT off. And one thing I do want to mention is the back plates. This, uh, the one that came with the Cooler Master is plastic, but the one that comes with the Scythe is metal. There are rubber isolating pads here on either edge, as well as if you have, if you are gonna be using this with a socket 775, it comes with a little isolator pad here that you're meant to install to, uh, to stop it from shorting out. So this is like a powder coated metal back plate. So I need to install this and then the standoffs and this one works a little bit differently in that you add these rails to the side. Once you get the back plate on, you add the rails and then the actual cooler screws on with just two screws versus this one, it was the back plate and then you have the four mounting locations. Mugen, it's two. Using the new scythe back plate, it does have these little cutouts around. So you wanna have your holes up top and then it fits around your uh, socket back plate like that and then you have to screw in the mounts from the front. Okay, the back plate is installed. I have my heat spreader clean. I've got the rails on. So this is for the Mugen 5. Uh, these rails attach to the back plate and then the CPU cooler attaches to these two points here. They've also designed the cooler so that it is uh, reversible. You can have it in either direction. Now, depending on which way you want it, you can have the cutout offside where it's more towards the ram or you can have it where it sits back i think for better clearance i am going to have it where it's sitting like this where it where it juts more towards the back and uh, and then it raises up over the vrms i think it'll work out better just for uh, for future ram clearance because there is an additional ram slot in there where if i install it the other way it will be extremely hard to use that other slot all right thermal compound is installed i'm screwing the cpu cooler on now and one nice thing is that they do include the screwdriver and the reason why is because to get one of the screws on you have to go all the way down through the heat sink and then screw it in and that's how you mount the cooler I do have it set up for the push-pull configuration like I said I was going to do and we're ready to start testing it right now here we are first boot with the Mugen 5 uh, you know unfortunately I do lose that fancy RGB top plate of the cooler but I kept my RGB push and pull fans let's see if it actually improved thermals just getting it booted up now. This will be a similar test with the Mugen 5 cooler. I'm going to change my overclock to my five gigahertz hot stable, load profile, five gigahertz max, and we'll watch the temps climb. So far, so good. A couple seconds in, we have not reached peak yet. 100 degrees C is when it will throttle. 91, ooh, and then back down again. So far, so good. And then we just finished one lap of the very hard burn-in test and we did not hit a thermal cut. This is great. So far it looks to be running five to 10 degrees cooler overall across the board. Wow, that's cool. Core Max 95, it's no longer at 100. That five degree C is significant because that is where the thermal cut happens. Uh, also, this is at 100% usage at five gigahertz 
I mean, it's pushing all six cores to the maximum. Yes, the Mugen 5 does run cooler than the Gamax GT. Sweet. So you lose a little bit of RGB flare, but the more aluminum does matter. And remember, I kept the fans the same. So you do get this very nice cooling fan with the Mugen, but I'm not running it just for comparison's sake. I wanted to see how does the aluminum compare between them by having a bit more surface area. Because the thing with these Intel CPUs is they do not use a soldered thermal interface material on the CPU. So I wondered, is it a limit of Intel chips or is it a limit of the cooler? And at this point, uh, I was hitting the limit of my other cooler. So this one, I'm still running the burn-in test. We've now done two laps at very hard and it has not thermal throttled. Awesome. So I'll let that run for a bit, and then I'll come back and show you the performance difference between going from 4.5 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. Okay, we've now dropped down to around 35 degrees C on all six cores, and I've dialed back my overclock back to 4.5 stable, which is what I typically would run at with the Gamax GT. And I wanna give you a Cinebench score. So this will be my CPU score at 4.5, which is the maximum that I used to run my CPU at before when gaming, specifically when VR gaming, because I found at five gigahertz on VR gaming, I would get weird issues. So I dialed it back to 4.5 and it was completely stable. So we're whipping through a Cinebench CPU score right now with my i5-8600K, and we're gonna get a score at 4.5, and then I'll dial it up to five gigahertz, and we'll see how much the score increases. All right, we got a 1096 Cinebench at 4.5 gigahertz. Now, let me change my overclock up to five gigahertz. Go back to Cinebench, run Cinebench at five gigahertz. It'll whip through that. We can monitor some of the temps right now. But yeah, we're at uh, 78C per core, which is a good five to 10 degrees cooler than, than what I would have on the Gamax GT. And we're almost done this test already. We should be nearing 1200 on the score on Cinebench. There it is, 1205. I think that's five higher than my best ever score. 1200 was what I remember being my best. So I just got a 1205 at five gigahertz and we did not hit thermal load and we're down to 38 degrees C on all cores again. So yeah, at this point, I have to say, it is a recommended buy. The Mugen 5 does perform better than the Gamax GT, just because you have that extra surface area. You have more heat pipes and more surface area on the scythe. So, all right guys, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you wanna to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.